Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm finally doing a video on Eric Berg, whiteboard addict, cholesterol denier, and eater of four to five eggs a day, as he said in a pretty recent video. We're gonna look at the claims he made in that video about animal versus plant protein, as well as the claims he made in other videos about cholesterol, put them up against the research, and see how they stack up, because he doesn't seem to cite a lot of research, but let's get started. I wanna start by saying I don't think Eric Berg is a bad guy. I don't think he has like evil intentions or anything like that. I'm here to really talk about his ideas, his whiteboard teachings, which potentially could be harmful for your arteries. And yeah, he's probably a really nice guy. I would just say, don't let him be the nice Berg that the ship known as your heart crashes into and results in a heart attack. I'd only really seen Eric Berg hanging around my recommended video section on YouTube. I didn't realize that he has over 3 million subscribers. So a lot of people are seeing his videos and I don't have a problem with all of his videos. I mean, I'm not gonna complain about his why ginkgo biloba is good for you video. Though in the description, what ginkgo is goof for doesn't have any citations. Again, a trend that we will see. A lot of people eat up the information in his videos, and I think it's for a few reasons, the first of which is his old school whiteboard delivery method, like literally straight from a schoolhouse. And I think we've been sort of conditioned to trust this method of information transfer, but just because it's on a whiteboard does not mean that it's true. The next is his credentials. He's Dr. Eric Berg, but I think there's an issue, a pattern of people sort of favoring credentials over scientific citations and resources that are used. But while Dr. Eric Berg has a doctorate, he is not a medical doctor from his own disclaimer. It refers to how he is a licensed but no longer practicing chiropractor. So when people first start watching him, they might be playing into a apparent brand of him being a medical doctor. And I'd love to see a poll of his current viewers and how many of them believe he's a medical doctor, how many don't. And I wanna add though that I don't care if he's a doctor or not. I care whether or not he is making scientifically validated claims with real sources, which is my whole MO. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. And then the last point is that he's telling people what they wanna hear. He's telling people sort of good news about their bad habits. You don't have to be afraid of cholesterol anymore. To increase good cholesterol, you have to consume egg yolks, butter, and cheese. He's telling people to eat four to five eggs a day, as his recent video mentioned. Here he is talking about it. But generally I will eat four eggs and sometimes I'll eat five eggs per day. Eric, I'm gonna stop you right there, Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's 750 to 935 milligrams of cholesterol per day, which is a huge leap above what the average American eats who are already eating some of the highest levels of cholesterol in the world. So it's worth mentioning that there are many organizations that recommend 300 milligrams a day of cholesterol or less, or 200 or less if you're at a high risk of heart disease, which is a lot of people, especially considering that about 50% of healthy heart donors had severe lesions on their heart. Yeah, we're talking about pretty much everyone. And a reminder that heart disease is our leading cause of death, though I'm well aware that probably most of Eric's audience has been sort of programmed to believe that cholesterol is not a threat, and we're gonna get into that in a bit. But I wanna start off by mentioning this recent study that came out this year, not funded by any crazy vegans or anything like that. They found that each 300 milligrams of cholesterol was associated with a 17% increased risk of cardiovascular disease. They also found that each half of an egg was associated with a 6% increased risk of cardiovascular disease and an 8% increased risk of death. And remember, those are half eggs. So multiply those by two for the four and a half to five eggs per day. We're looking at Eric Berg right off the bat being at a 50% increased risk of cardiovascular disease and up to an 80% increased risk of death because of his egg consumption based off these associations. Great advice, Eric. Very expert advice, I'm sorry. But if you were to respond to some studies, he'd probably link some popular pro-egg studies. Those are pretty much all funded by the egg industry. This one and this one and this paper. So one of the key reasons that I consume eggs on a regular basis, uh, not only do I enjoy it, but eggs have the greatest anabolic effect, okay? <gasps> eggs are 48% steroids? I'm just kidding, anabolic just refers to building tissues, but right here he's making some pretty incredible claims with absolutely nothing linked in the description. I have a little scale here that shows these percentages and the type of protein. So egg, 48% of it actually turns into body tissue. And I'm not talking about even absorption. I'm talking about 48% of that egg actually turns into your body tissue. And that's pretty much the highest, not counting breast milk, 
Firstly, using basic logic, he's making an absolute statement that we know can't always hold up. Simple example, imagine if you had a diet of 100% eggs, your body isn't gonna turn 48% of what you eat into new tissues. Your body has no reason to make that much tissue. I mean, unless you have some massive cancer growths. So right off the bat, I'm a bit worried, but let's do some more research on this 48% claim. So I did an exhaustive search of pretty much every keyword and percentage that he used, and I couldn't find anything anabolic related specifically, but I did find this book mentioning that eggs have a 48% nitrogen retention value. But again, there's no citation for that claim, no research. And the next thing he says about whey is interesting because I know a lot of bodybuilders use whey protein, but he says, Look at soy, only 17% dairy, whey, this would be like cheese and uh, whey, 16%, very small. His dry erase marker chart here says that soy lands at 17% and whey is even lower at 16%, making it, you know, about six times less effective at building new tissues than eggs. All of this is very red flag raising. It makes no sense, but let's keep going. An egg white is 17%, which is fascinating because that cholesterol and fat actually help in the anabolic effect. Yeah, cholesterol will actually help you build muscle. Quite an amazing claim with absolutely zero research backing it, which is par for the course. But zooming out here, looking at the bigger picture, he's actually saying he eats eggs because protein though, literally taking it further, not, not even just about getting enough protein, but protein efficiency. But is this really true? Can eggs really be like six times as efficient as plant protein and even other animal proteins? Let's look into this. And it appears that this whole nitrogen retention number is a bit outdated. And the score that they appear to use nowadays, the FDA and the WHO use the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score, which is a mouthful and it's from zero to one, zero being being the least digestible and usable and one being perfect. So this is not just about the amino acid profile, but also how much you can digest it. And yeah, eggs are a perfect one, but guess what also is? Soy protein. Heck, potato is 0.99. I'm not sure where Berg got his numbers exactly, but they don't match up with the newer sort of standard. And key point for those that aren't aware, just eating whole plants, you can easily blast through all of your amino acid requirements in a day. I mean, here is chronometer.com, you know, two minutes on this or another nutrition tracker, you'd be able to figure it out. This is just 2000 calories of what a lot of vegans eat, things like black beans and brown rice and oatmeal. And we are way past our protein requirements and hitting everything else as well. So he's eating these high cholesterol, decent amount of saturated fat, high baggage eggs to get higher protein efficiency when he can easily get all the protein that he needs from other sources without that baggage. And I'd be curious to go further and see if there is actually a difference between plant and animal protein in terms of how much muscle people have on their body. Well, this study looked at just that, 3000 people, muscle mass and type of protein. They found no clinical difference between animal protein or plant protein in terms of muscle mass. Furthermore, as a Western Western culture, we are massively over consuming protein. Being worried about protein scores is like being worried about the octane rating of gasoline that criminals are using for arson, for burning down houses. Hey, melt face Johnny, you forgot to buy the premium. How do we know it's gonna burn down? We don't want a repeat of last time. This is how you melt your face. The most ironic part of all this, which I probably talk about too much, is that vegans actually have higher blood levels of protein than people that eat meat and eggs. This is free serum albumin, which can be used up a bit as C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory response. So your inflammation levels, if they're higher, can actually lower your blood protein levels. It's no surprise that vegans actually have also lower C-reactive protein levels, lower inflammation levels. Inflammation is also the last thing you want because it encourages fatal heart attacks. And from this study, high dietary intake of eggs and meat were associated with higher levels of C-reactive protein. Well, fruits and vegetables and total plant foods were associated with lower levels of C-reactive protein. Why is this? Well, there are several things depending on the animal product, but for eggs, it could be the high arachidonic acid, a certain type of pro-inflammatory omega-6 content of eggs. Now, eggs are the number two dietary source in the US diet, despite being massively out consumed by chicken. And eggs by weight have over twice as much arachidonic acid as chicken. So Eric Berg is slamming down that arachidonic acid with his four to five eggs a day. It's also funny to eat eggs for the protein because eggs are an animal protein which appears to raise IGF-1. Vegans in general have lower levels of IGF-1 and IGF-1 in excess fuels every stage of cancer growth and spreading. 
And in terms of cancer, there are several studies that at the least raise some alarm bells about eggs and cancer. I mean, this study, which adjusted for a ton, including meat consumption, found that high versus low egg consumption was associated with a 70% increased odds of all cancer, notably almost three times the odds of breast cancer. Now from this study, higher eggs versus lower meant plus 47% increase in fatal prostate cancer. And higher egg consumption from this one meant twice the risk of prostate cancer progression. Again, these are associations, but it just ain't looking so good. This is just a side point, not even related to cholesterol. Set that cholesterol also appears to feed cancer. Fun stuff we're learning every day. And seriously, why is Eric Berg so obsessed with protein efficiency? It's not like he's doing competitive bodybuilding or some super jacked guy trying to maintain all this muscle mass. And if you do wanna be like that, I suggest checking out the Game Changers. There's a ton of people like Nima Delgado, Kendrick Ferris, and Patrick Baboumian, Jahina Malik, who's been vegan since birth, pro bodybuilder. These people are jacked or have set some major strength records. And they did it, eating plant protein. They are stronger than Eric Berg ever will be, and they don't eat eggs at all. All right. He also makes a bunch of crazy nutrient claims, like eggs have a bunch of omega-3s and a lot of carotenoids. They're very high in nutrients. Healthy fats, which is right here. So it has DHA, EPA. Normal eggs don't have a lot of omegas. There are omega-3 enhanced eggs where chickens are fed flax, but it would take 14 omega-3 eggs or 46 normal eggs to get as much omega-3 as one tablespoon of flax. It has a lot of the carotenoids, which is good for the eye. For carotenoids, you would have to eat 75 eggs to equal one cup of cooked spinach. So how does Eric justify this massive cholesterol consumption upwards of almost a thousand milligrams a day? Well, the reality is he's what I consider a cholesterol denier. He denies the connection between dietary saturated fat and cholesterol and heart disease. He has a whole video on this. You don't have to be afraid of cholesterol anymore. To increase good cholesterol, you have to consume egg yolks, butter, and cheese. That's right. In that video, he actually refers to the animal fat cholesterol heart disease connection as brainwashing. The lipid heart attack uh, theory, and it's just been brainwashed into uh, our minds. And it's basically the greatest scam of the century. And I just went deep into this narrative in my recent PragerU video, PragerU not being a real university if you are interested in this topic. And side note, I listened to you guys and I did make Potato U merch. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my PragerU video. <laughs> but the main point is that higher LDL or bad cholesterol is causally linked to heart disease. That is the consensus. And it's not just an appeal to authority, it's based off a ton of research. But Eric Berg University, I mean, I'm sorry, Dr. Eric Berg, I can't get the misleading credentials right. <laughs> he goes on to make claim after claim without any studies in this video once again. It's just blogs and a dry erase marker. Um, and the amount of sugar that we eat not only will spike cholesterol and, and triglycerides because the body's trying to heal the damaged arteries, but it will clog up your arteries more than anything. And so, and that includes the whole grains that the doctors are telling you it's okay, or the government, whatever. Did he just partially blame whole grains for heart disease? Is this guy serious? It's literally the opposite of pretty much all of the research out there. I'm not even sure if there's any study that even shows that link at all, but looking at this one, high versus low whole grain intake is 16% lower risk of mortality slash death rate and 18% lower risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. And listen closely to this next meta-analysis. This is the food he's trying to scare you out of eating, quote. This meta-analysis provides further evidence that whole grain intake is associated with a reduced risk of coronary heart disease, cardiovascular disease, and total cancer, and mortality from all causes, respiratory diseases, infectious diseases, diabetes, and all non-cardiovascular, non-cancer causes. That was like the opposite of a symptoms list for prescription drugs. And while we're on the topic of heart disease, I wanna mention something that I foresee in the comments. People saying, oh, well, Eric Berg doesn't have any heart disease because he had a coronary artery calcium score of zero. He's perfect, there's nothing wrong with his arteries. Firstly, coronary artery calcium score is newer. People don't know that much about it and can be misled. The reality is that a score of zero does not mean no heart disease. The reality is that those scores go up much later in life. Eric is early 50s and the average score for his age range is actually very close to zero. Not until late 50s and over 65 do we see these scores getting high on average. 
And we're talking about people on a standard American diet. And remember how 50% of people who donated their healthy hearts had, you know, severe coronary lesions? Well, to the same study, people even younger than them, it's cut off at over 50, but people younger than them from 40 to 49 years old have about an 80% rate of those severe heart lesions. Yeah, that age group in particular has a coronary artery calcium score average of about zero. So how is this possible? Well, we are talking about calcium versus soft plaques. You can still have these major soft plaques, which by the way, are the ones that rupture and cause the vast majority of heart attacks. It's not the slow narrowing of the arteries, it's that sort of popping of a inflamed zit. It's gross. So no, Eric Berg isn't certified heart disease free. And in fact, I think this is gonna to lead to a lot of people, you know, under 60, under 65, thinking that since their score is zero, they can, they can do whatever they want, that they're fine when they're not. He even tries to scare you into worrying about carbs raising your LDL. The reality is that vegans have ridiculously low LDL compared to the average meat eater or vegetarian, and they eat more carbs. How does that work? the same dietary pattern that he is pushing in one way or another, we're talking about higher egg consumption, lower carb consumption, be afraid of whole grains. That's a low carb diet. And from this meta-analysis is associated with a 30% increased risk of mortality, a 30% higher mortality rate in the studies. Now there are a ton of points in that second video on cholesterol that I would love to rebut, but I wanna move on and zoom out here because whenever someone's making dietary recommendations, you have to think about how they are going to affect the planet. And in this case, it would involve a massive increase in egg consumption in the US. We're talking about egg consumption going from a few hundred up to about 1,400 eggs per person per year. And in terms of carbon emissions, that brings eggs way up to the second leading emitter in terms of food right behind beef. That is insane. In addition, eggs come from animals. They come from chickens and increasing this demand would massively have to increase our hen population, which means way more factory farming and any male chicks born to the egg industry, for example, are generally just ground up and so forth. So it's not, it's not something we wanna increase. In the end, again, avoid that nice berg. Do not listen to Eric Berg's cholesterol advice. I mean, it's going against the consensus. If that means anything to you. Apparently it doesn't mean anything to anyone anymore. What should mean even more is that he isn't citing any studies when he's making all of these claims. He's just sort of rattling them off. Occasionally he'll mention a blog and he'll just rely on, you know, being a doctor. Now his protein efficiency stuff is total BS. And remember that first study from earlier this year, his egg consumption is putting him at an 80% increased risk of mortality, at least according to that study. And so I employ you, Mr. Berg, if you're gonna make claims about cholesterol and all these things, at least cite some sources. Maybe you wanna keep it simple for any layman. You can leave them out of this actual video, at least cite them in the description below. And please check for the industry funding in those studies because those industry funded studies are the root of a lot of these ideas that you're pushing. All right, so that's it for today. Let me know what you think about Eric Berg, if there are any major points I left out and feel free to like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in the next video.